good morning everybody. I'm Debbie Trail with Stitch in Heaven and today we have got a really fun lesson for you. I'm here with my good friend Dana. Hi. And we are best known as the Deb and Dana show. Right? Right. Yeah. On the water. Yeah. On the cruises, Dana is always my right hand gal. I say I'm the owner and she's the boss, you know. But today we want to show you a demo that Dana often gives on our cruises. And it's a really cool binding technique, which we all need to know all different ways to do our binding. So I'm gonna let Dana tell you about it. Good morning. Okay, I learned to do binding from my mom, who uh, in the 1970s was very much into the show scene of the quilting world. Um, and she was very particular, and she taught me how to do it and how to do it what she felt was correctly. Now, I'm not the quilt police. I do enjoy doing mine by hand on the back. Some of you will machine bind, and that is fine too. It's whatever is appropriate for what you're working on. So these are just some of the tips and techniques that I have learned through the ages. So first of all, everybody knows, I'm gonna assume that you've done quilts before and you've done bindings. You're gonna cut your bindings the, the width that you prefer. I personally cut my bindings at two inches. I'm gonna sew it on with a quarter inch so I've got plenty to wrap around to the back side. When you take your strips, and again, mine are two inches, yours may be two and a quarter, two and a half, you may be doing a really wide binding and that's okay too. You're gonna sew diagonally to join your strips together. I drew my line to show you where you're gonna sew, but this easy angle ruler is awesome to use where you don't even have to draw the line. All you have to do is place it down. I've got my 45 degree here. It's showing me my line straight across. I can take my rotary cutter, cut it, cut the little tip off, take it to my sewing machine, and that quarter inch is already marked, I just sew the quarter inch. So the easy angle ruler is awesome to Very use cool. when you're putting your bindings together. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go and make all my strips together. Okay, so I've got all of my strips now sewn together. This is really long, you know, like 300 inches or more. And you can see I've got two seams sewn right here just to show you what it would look like. The trick that you do is on the very first part of your first strip, you're going to go ahead and cut the 45 degree angle the exact same way that you have sewn all your strips together. So that is done before you ever are attaching the binding or before you ever are going to now sew it or fold it in half and press it. Now, I'm going to go to my quilt. I have made just kind of a, a little mini quilt here to show you. And this is where I would start. So there's my angle that's already cut. If I were to open it up, you would see the 45. So I've just laid it down, left myself <clears throat> about six inches or so. So you are going to start and now I'm going to show you how I do the corners. I will have to say, I would always try to give credit where credit is due, and on a cruise, one of our teachers by the name of Wendy Matheson showed us a trick that was like a light bulb moment. When you're sewing your binding on and you get down to the corner, what I always did was kind of stretched it out here and I would take a pen or something and I would think, oh, I'm gonna stop about right here because I want about a quarter of an inch. And then I would sew and then I would look and I would sew and okay, made it. She took a post-it note and folded it on the 45. You lay your post-it note down. You sew. Oh my God. Until you get to the corner. And that's a perfect, it doesn't matter if you sewed it on with a quarter inch, you could have used a three eighths inch. You could have been doing a wide two inch binding. It doesn't matter. You just sew until you hit the post-it note. Do not use a ruler. You hmm. will break your needle. 
or chip your ruler or both, and then turn and sew off at that angle. So simple. It was so like bold. simple. So simple. So once <clears throat> you've done that, let's well, see. that tip in itself is worth the cost of this video, isn't it? Though. Yes. I Thank love you, that. Wendy, for sharing. Thank that you, Wendy. On one of our fabulous cruises. Mm -hmm. All right. We learn all kinds of fun stuff on cruises. All kinds of fun stuff. So when I get to the corner, you can see on this one. Let me pull it down here where I went to the edge and then I sew off to the corner. Then you do the trick of, you know, folding it straight up, folding it straight down. Well, now some people may not know that trick. Okay, let me show you. Okay, pretend this is sewn and off the corner. Your 45 degree is already held because it's sewn. So you're gonna go straight up with the quilt. Then you're going to come straight down and you're going to want to make sure that this angle and this angle are on your quilt. And this is assuming your, your corners are square, which is always a good idea to use a square up ruler and make sure they're square. And then I start off the quilt using the same seam allowance and come down. Okay, so you don't start like a quarter of an inch in. No, you start at the very edge. I start at the very edge. Okay. And I might even do a back stitch up there. I don't want it secure. Yeah, that's a good idea. And that way my 45 on the front is already done. And then when I fold it to the back, you will honestly have four out of four angles that go 45 wow. degrees. Usually there are only three out of four <clears throat> on a quilt that will work. Yeah. This will get you four out of four. All right. Now, you are going to keep on sewing around. And now we're going to act like we are to the end of our quilt. We made it around. So, here's that angle that I cut at the very beginning. So, just to recap, when you mm -hmm. start your start your sewing you come in about six inches mm -hmm. to start so you leave this little tag this is here. a flappy okay. little thing all right this <clears throat> comes over and sometimes you have 30 inches left just you know whack it off at some point longer than your beginning strip and you just lay it down real smooth and you lay this one on top of it, obviously you've taken it out of your machine at this point. Now, these sew line pins are awesome because they have three colors in it, so it doesn't matter what color your binding is, you can switch from white yeah. to yellow, yellow to I dark. Think, uh, I think there's just a clear one, like a all kinds marker of things. tool. So it's good for light and dark. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna mark haven't done anything but just mark this little line right in here. Okay, and I've marked this several times, so that's... Okay, got it. Got it. I didn't open it up, didn't measure my binding width, didn't do anything. That's already on the 45. Now you open it up. And there's my line. That's the 45 that was cut here. You've seen right like that. Got it? Got it. Okay. I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna measure a half inch out. Cut it on the 45. Okay. Now I have my two 45s. Oh, that's brilliant. Already done. I take them, put them together, and you know how you sew a 45, you've got your little wings out there, so you can pin it, you know, you kind of bunch up your quilt, you pin it, you sew your quarter inch line right through here, and then it just oh, it will pops closed yeah. perfectly, and here I am, here was my beginning where I started, and this is my ending. How do I know this was my ending? Because I didn't cut my cat ears. Look at those little cat ears. And there's absolutely no difference 
for your beginning, all your join stitches and your ending stitch will all be the same. You don't have one wonky one going the other direction and it's just amazing. That is, that is very, very cool. The other thing that I do when I am ready to attach the binding by hand on the back side is I will give this a quick press. I was just gonna ask that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will press this. You know, you don't, obviously on a quilt, you've got batting. A lot of people are using 80-20 batting. It's got some polyester in there, and you know who irons a quilt anyway? Mm -hmm. You would not want to use a really hot iron on a quilt. Um, but it does help with your hands not to make them so tired while you're stitching this down. Mm -hmm. And then when you turn it back, do you pin it? I generally use those clippies. Yeah, the little... Oh, I didn't bring my clippies yeah, to the table the with little. me. But Stitch in Heaven carries yeah. them, and they are fantastic. Yeah. And I do want to show these because these yes. are very cool. They are awesome. They have that little gap in them, so your binding can just fit right in there, and it fills it up. Yeah. So I may put, like you know, six or eight in a row. And then as you're going down, you just pop them out and move it on down to the next section. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, those are, that's a, those are really nice tools I have. They are. And you can use those for lots of bindings and, and really a lot of different things. Yes, so. absolutely. Actually, I'm gonna show you this. When you're pulling this over and you're and you're by, uh, sewing this down. When you get here and you've sewn this on properly, this will um, fold over and it will be a 45 degree on the back, which is, is what you want this to look like. You know, on the back, you want this to look like this. And this is the reason that we do all the making sure that you finish at the quarter inch stage and sewing off to a, a 45 degree angle. I'm oh, back. Okay, Dana's back. <laughs> and what are All you right. gonna show? Okay, this is another trick that I learned and this goes in when you're sewing your strips together at the very beginning. Sometimes, and this is kind of a good example, you've cut, you know, maybe 10 to 12 strips and you've got them all laying there and you're bringing them out and you're trying to sew them all together. Well, they get turned around and this is directional. So it might make a little difference on which way yeah. you sew them together. So how do you know how to sew them always right side up? Well, my mama taught me this. There's two ends of the fabric. One. This is printed all the way to the edge, the selvage. Yeah. This has the brand, has the, oh, that's right, sorry. This has, you know, the name of the fabric, the manufacturer or something. So the two ends always look different. Never join two ends together that are alike. Then you don't even have to think about it. They will always be in going in the right direction. This is right. See, I've got the non-matching ends. So I would mm -hmm. put them like this. This is not right. Yeah, because if you were to sew this together, it would be like this. Oh, look at and those. Part of our flowers would be going one mm -hmm. way and part of our flowers would be going the other way. We can't have that happen. No, no, no. But also, you know, you think, well, binding, does it really make that much of a difference? Well, it does if like you're doing a stripe or you're doing something that is directional in a very small print. But it also applies for sewing your backings together. Oh, that's a good tip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you have to seam your backing, it's the same principle. So opposites together and you never have to worry about did I get the direction going the right way. Good tip. Thank you, Dana. You are so welcome. It's well, been fun. Yeah, this has been fun. I'm happy my friend Dana has been able to join us today. Uh, leave us some comments. How, what you thought about this lesson. If you have any questions, be sure and ask them. Mm -hmm. uh, we will answer them for you. 
uh, we would like to invite you to join our YouTube channel. Absolutely. Because we'll have more informative lessons like this in the future. And we hope that you've enjoyed this lesson as much as we've enjoyed showing it to you. Absolutely. It's been fun. So this is Deb and Dana from Stitch in Heaven. We'll see you next time.